WWE fans know that wrestling is dangerous, but most don't realize just how life-threatening being a wrestler can be. Many wrestlers like The Undertaker, Seth Rollins, and even Vince McMahon have been inches away from dying in the ring. Triple H suffered injuries so severe that he wouldn't have lived to see his wedding. The game was one of six men who competed in the first Elimination Chamber match in 2002. At one point, Triple H was on the mat and RVD performed the five-star frog splash. Of course, being Van Dam, he took it a step further and climbed on top of one of the pods. There wasn't enough space for RVD to fully stand up though, so Mr. Monday night had to crouch. Due to the awkward position, Rob Van Dam's knee accidentally landed on Triple H's throat. The blow caused Triple H to swell, which began blocking his airway, and the game was in danger of being unable to breathe. Thanks to having a thick neck and just plain luck, the King of Kings not only survived, but finished the match. He did, however, stay at a local hospital overnight and was out of action for a few weeks. It was only afterwards when I found out how badly he was hurt with his throat. Thank God that uh, he was able to walk out of the ring and able to continue the match once again. The tennis world slide is a hilarious moment, but this causes people not to realize just how much danger Tess O'Neill was in. The primetime player's head was inches away from hitting one of the male supports under the ring. Had O'Neill's skull collided at the speed he was going, this would not have been a laughing matter. Kalisto almost died before he made it to WWE. In 2011, while he was an independent wrestler, Kalisto was wrestling a match in Mexico. The luchador performed a move to the outside, but hit the guardrail and landed on the concrete floor. Kalisto was seriously injured, but thankfully, he didn't die. He he did, however, suffer from post-concussion syndrome and nearly quit wrestling because of the accident. Eddie Guerrero and JBL's match at Judgment Day in 2004 goes down as one of the bloodiest in WWE history. About 15 minutes into the match, JBL did this. Despite what it seems, the chair shot was not the reason Eddie Guerrero got busted open. Eddie, like all wrestlers who bleed, used a small razor blade to cut himself open. However, Eddie accidentally cut himself too deep, causing an excessive amount of bleeding. It was so severe that once the match ended, Eddie went backstage and collapsed. Latino Heat was then rushed to the hospital, where doctors treated him. At the 2018 Survivor Series, the Raw World Champion, Brock Lesnar, was set to face the SmackDown World Champion, AJ Styles. Lesnar and Paul Heyman appeared on Raw to talk about the match, but were interrupted by Ginger Mahal and Samir and Sunil Singh. Mahal and the Bollywood boys wanted to help the Beast relax and prepare for his pay-per-view match. Brock Lesnar didn't go for it and ended up attacking the trio. However, the situation went from fun to scary when Lesnar took Sunil Singh to Suplex City. Sunil landed on his neck and bounced off the ring. After a few tense seconds, Lesnar picked up Sunil for a second German suplex, and Sunil made sure to protect his neck. Luckily, Sunil wasn't badly hurt, but the wrestlers backstage were upset at Brock Lesnar for the potential life-threatening accident. Cruiserweight matches are some of the fastest and most exciting to watch, but one mistake can have disastrous results. In 2004, Paul London took on Akio, aka Jimmy Wang Yang. London went for a kick, but Yang caught him and flipped his opponent into the air. However, Paul London was too close to the ropes and his feet caught them. This caused London to land head first on the mat. It looked bad, but Paul London somehow was able to continue the match. This is kind of sickening to watch. In 2001, Christian turned on Edge and ended one of the most iconic tape teams in WWE history. This began a series of matches between the two, one of which was a ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Edge and Christian were two innovators of the ladder match, but they may have taken things too far. To end the fight, Edge gave Christian a concerto on top of a ladder. That wasn't your internet having trouble. WWE has actually edited out the chair shot in some versions of this match. The chair shot gave Christian one of the worst concussions of his career, and it's a miracle he didn't have lasting damage. Knowing what that chair shot did makes it even more disturbing to see Christian's lifeless body fall to the mat afterward. Seth Rollins' career and life nearly came to an end in a matter of seconds. In 2004, Roman Reigns was facing Randy Orton in the main event of Raw. Orton was part of the authority, so Seth Rollins and Kane ran out to help their teammate. During this, a steel cage started to be lowered around the ring. Seth tried to get inside the ring right as a spike was being lowered into place. Rollins could have easily been pierced and squashed by the cage, but Seth moved out of the way at the last moment. This next match got so bad that Vince McMahon ordered that it be stopped. At King of the Ring 2001, Kurt Angle fought Shane McMahon in a street fight. While Angle got hurt pretty badly, it was Shane who was at the risk of losing his life. The big spot of the match was Kurt Angle sending Shane McMahon crashing through the glass panels near the entrance stage. To perform the stunt, WWE used sugar glass, which breaks easily. However, that's not what got used. There was a mistake in production, and the panels were made of plexiglass, which is much tougher. 
Trooper. When Kurt threw Shane, the glass didn't break and Shane's head hit the floor. Being true professionals, Angle McMahon kept hitting the glass until it finally broke, but Shane's life was at risk. Vince McMahon realized his son might die and told the referee to tell Shane and Kurt to stop. Shane was loopy though and he couldn't understand the message the referee was relaying. Thankfully, Shane ended up being okay, but he was taken to the hospital after the match. Only a few months after debuting on the main roster, Shinsuke Nakamura found himself facing off against John Cena. This should have been an awesome match against two amazing wrestlers, but it's best remembered for one moment. To end the fight, Shinsuke hit an inverted exploder suplex. Possibly due to Cena's huge size, the face of WWE accidentally landed on his head and could have broken his neck. Luckily, that didn't happen, and John Cena wasn't even injured. The match ended as planned, but reports surfaced that people backstage were mad at Nakamura for the near-death mistake. In the weeks leading up to the 1999 Royal Rumble, a special Rumble match was held on Raw. Members of the corporation and DX would compete, with the winner getting the number 30 spot in the Royal Rumble match. Vince McMahon entered himself into the match, and it looked like the chairman of WWE had won. That was until the final entrant, China, marched towards the ring. Thanks to a distraction, China was able to throw McMahon out of the ring. As he was falling though, Vince McMahon's head caught the bottom rope and snapped violently. The chairman lay lifeless afterward, but thankfully it wasn't serious. However, Vince could have easily broke his neck due to the botch. CM Punk almost died before even making it to WWE. In 2002, while competing as an independent wrestler, Punk was having a match against an opponent named Reckless Youth. A freak accident occurred and Punk fractured his skull. Punk said that when it happened, he felt like someone had poured warm water inside his brain. Despite this, Punk continued to wrestle and finish the match. However, he had to use a chair in order to leave the ring. Once backstage, Punk collapsed and couldn't open his eyes. Punk was taken to the hospital where he was told this. He immediately told me that, like, you've seen people with lesser fractures die. Despite the seriousness of the injury, CM Punk refused to take any medicine due to his straight-edge beliefs. Instead, Punk spent a month resting at a family member's home, which did allow him to get back into the ring eventually. The TLC pay-per-view is one of the most brutal events WWE has each year, so it shouldn't be surprising that the show has had some near-death experiences. During the first Tables, Lives, and Chairs pay-per-view in 2009, Chris Jericho and The Big Show took on Shawn Michaels and Triple H. The final moment of the match saw HBK hit Big Show with Sweet Chin Music, causing Chris Jericho to fall to the outside. The plan was for Jericho to fall through the table through the floor to lessen the impact. What happened instead was Jericho's head landed right on the edge of the table. It looked painful, but nobody thought it was life-threatening. However, in 2020, a fan shared the clip on Twitter. Chris Jericho responded and revealed the accident nearly cost him his life. The Undertaker has come close to death multiple times in his career, like when he dived headfirst to the outside at WrestleMania. Or when he got burned by his own pyro. The one incident that Taker has publicly admitted that he was inches away from dying happened near the end of his career. At Super Showdown 2019, The Undertaker took on Goldberg in what was supposed to be a dream match, but ended up being a nightmare. The first major problem was when Goldberg hit his head on the ring post, causing him to bleed. Unfortunately, that wasn't the only painful accident that happened. Later on, Goldberg went to hit his iconic jackhammer, but the move fell apart and Undertaker came crashing down on his head. It looked bad, and Undertaker would later explain how close to dying he was. I was two inches away from making my wife a widow my kid's father was. This incident actually resulted in a move getting banned from WWE. To find out which move it was, watch this video.